Hello and welcome to the video. Today we'll be comparing the power consumption of an NVMe drive to a SATA N.2 drive. At the moment I've got an NVMe drive in here. It's a Kyoxia. Let me just get out the information. As you know what we're doing. Get the information up. It's a Kyoxia 256GB drive. It has a, on the specs it says it has a power consumption of about 1 watt at idle. And this is, I think this is a fairly idle. This is a Toshiba Lux with Eco Utility, which will give you a full readout on the power consumption. Won't be very scientific, but it will give us a vague idea. I'm just going to get tasked to interrupt, make sure it's idle. Idle test, where there's no disk activity. You can just go to sleep and there's nothing. But it, they're still going to be on, it's just going to be idle. One more time. And make the power. Never. Don't go to sleep, never. I'm going to put on a stopwatch. I'm also going to turn on Wi Fi. Watch. Let me make sure that the battery saver is on. Turn on always. Go. Three, two, one. Start. Okay, so we're coming up to two hours, which I think I'm going to cut it off at because I do not want to be here for, I do not want to have my laptop doing this for the next day because it lasts such a long time. So let's just say two hours and then and work out the, per the percentage lost per hour and then we can use that to compare to the SATA drive. Okay, so we're coming up to it, 10 seconds, I don't think it will change, so we're looking at about 80, 81. Do I start over against 80, because that makes maths a lot easier. No, 81. Okay, let's say that it was at 81% after 2 hours. Charge it up. And now future me will do the SATA test. 
So now future me has done the SATA test. I'm now going to do the uh, high power consumption test. Yeah, high power consumption test on the NVMe drive. For this I'm going to use heavy load because that has loads of different stress testing tools. I'm going to start it. I have all of the options on. CPU, disk, RAM, tree size and graphics. So this should drain really quickly. So let's press that. Wait for it to get everything to get going. And now in three, two, one. Go. Timer has started. And I'll see you back when it's either run out of battery or two hours because I think two hours is a good amount of time to see the percentage per hour. Start the timer. Okay, so it ran out. I think it ran about an hour and 45 minutes afterwards. I didn't see it run out, so um, we'll have to review the footage and we'll see at what time on the time lapse it said. That'll give us a vague idea. But when I say vague, I mean pretty accurate. You don't need to be super accurate. It's not a completely scientific test. Now I'm going to change the SSD. The previous footage that you saw previously would have been filmed now and then we know the results. Okay, so I'm going to replace the SSD in this. This is a very, it's a very easy laptop to take apart. And replace the SSD. I have done it numerous amount of times because I have had a need to for some reason. It just keeps breaking. It just keeps corrupting Windows installs and things. Probably my fault, I've probably have done something fun with it. Very easy laptop to take apart, extremely upgradable, but I'm not, this is not a review video. This is a video um, testing whether SSDs affect battery life. From my experience, I think it does, but I'm not sure by what, I'm, by what amount. These screws in the corner can be very tight because they um, reinforce the hinge and you want that to be tight because otherwise the screen goes all floppy and nobody likes that. Nobody likes a floppy, a floppy screen. There you go, there's my 16 gigs of memory, my SSD. It's a very small SSD because, yeah, but these are both Toshiba drives. Oh, I had the right screwdriver. Here. This laptop originally came with this Samsung SSD which I put inside this enclosure just to protect it. And I also used it to image the disk of this. These have got the exact same Windows 11 installs. There are no differences, it's just image from one disk to the other. But 
Another downside with um, SATA is that it, it probably have more battery life, but on the other hand, it's probably a lot slower. But with 16 gigs of RAM in usage, it's about the same. But boot up time is definitely a lot slower on SATA. Close this up, I'm going to charge it, and then we can do the next test. I've got a heavy load up here, which will do CPU, GIS, memory, pre-size, and GPU, test, it will do everything, as power consumption, all the same as last time, 3, 2, 1, wait for it to load, That's all loaded. Now we're going to go three, two, one. Watch as the power consumption drops as soon as I unplug it. Three, two, one. There you go. Power consumption from 30 watts down to 20. But it'll still give us a vague idea. Okay, it's going to time lapse. Okay, so I've got it on the SATA SSD. These are all the. I've got. Okay, so I've got it on the SATA SSD. It's plugged in, it's on 9.0%. percent i am just going to assume it's on 100 because I can't bother to wait that long. 9.0% is close enough. You can see power consumption down there, battery percentage there, task manager stuff here. This is, this has been nothing happening. It's going three, two, one, go. Ah, cause I'm gonna see it's about six watts, which is weirdly the same as the um, NVMe drive. I was expecting it to be less. We're only using 5%, we're only using 5% CPU. I mean 9%. Right. Time's not time lapse.
Okay, so I didn't get here at the right time. Again. You know, I'm filming the wrong order. That hasn't happened yet. Ignore what I'm saying. After over two hours. 84%. I doubt it's going to be different. But if it is, then the number will pop up now. And you'll see it in the time lapse anyway. I'm going to stop that. And then tomorrow, we'll do the loaded test. Because it's too late today. Bye.